Sunday night sound session right now in the building. One of our favorite MCs. Yeah, yeah. Longtime friend of the show. Introduce yeah. yourself. Canada's yeah. own. Canada's own. My name is Shad. Uh, yeah, first things first. Thanks, guys, for playing me so much. I really appreciate it. Oh, obviously, it. man. Like, uh, from the gate. You know yeah. I mean? you're, like, you're, you're, you're one of our favorite uh, persons, friends, and but also artists. Like, you're a phenomenal MC. Thank you. You know what I mean? And, Thank you. Uh, we play you because obviously we like you, but we also play you because we want to be able to hopefully introduce you to as many people as possible. Right. Uh, they, they need to be able to be hip to that dopeness, man. Yeah. Our job is easy, dude. We just yeah. play the music. You're the one that has to make the good music. Yeah. Well, it's uh, it's a joy, man. I love sending you guys joints, you know? Yeah. I, sent, I remember sending you the Coco Beware joint in the, in the email. I'm like, I feel like Hyphen's going to be into this right here. <laughs> I think that was the joint that was full of like '90s basketball references, right? So you know that's right in my wheelhouse. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we've had that. We've had that conversation. Yeah. It was chock full of ridiculousness. I'm like, yeah, and yeah. some obscurities. Yeah. yeah, no doubt. Let's talk about uh, what I'm kind of thinking is like the most popular thing that at least I'm seeing on Twitter right now. And we mm -hmm. got dragged into this the other day. Uh, mm -hmm. And I want to. I'm going to tie you into this in a roundabout way. So. Okay. Chuck D right now is railing on all sorts of corporations and radio and music industry stuff. Because, rightfully so. Rightfully so, because of like lack of representation um, and kind of the accountability messages that pushing. for messaging. Yeah. Yep. And it's all stuff that we've talked about off air many times. We talked about and on, on air, air. Yeah. and we agree with. And he brought us up because he said like, "Yo, there's a station Cube in Seattle that only plays local artists." from 10 to midnight on Sunday nights. And I was like, A, that's dope that Chuck D knows about our show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but B, I was like, yeah, word, that's true. I mean, that's the case. And then in a follow-up tweet from him, he mentioned Canada and the mm. CanCon rules. Yeah. So school yeah. people out there that don't know about CanCon in terms of media yeah. broadcasting in, in Canada. Okay, so CanCon came into play, um, I want to say, in the 80s. And it's Canadian content. Canadian what, content mm -hmm. is what it's shorthand for, CanCon. I think it came into play in the 80s basically as a means to, like, protect Canadian, or I don't want to say protect, to promote Canadian culture, um, seeing as we are side by side with you guys in the States and you guys export culture to the world very powerfully through very large uh, media. Propaganda machines. <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. Euphemistically, we'll say uh, yeah. very uh, big corporations. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so those rules came into effect. So basically, Canadian radio has to play a certain amount of Canadian made content i think it's around 30 percent um, how do they canadian, find canadian made like can you have a producer a composer yeah i think like you know if the featured artist is canadian is the, it's kind of the main thing and i think they also encourage it to be like made in canada so like yeah. if you are um alanis morissette in the 90s or something like that you record in la your producers in la everything's in la i'm not sure if that qualifies interesting at a certain point, hmm. but so basically to like in encourage the Canadian cultural machine to sort of like promote our own culture and national identity and also just to like promote our own artists. And I think that Canadian music is something we can be proud of. It's, it's, it's a thing I think, you know, in Canada, we punch above our weight, so to speak. We only have 30 million people and our exports are quite strong, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of everybody from Bieber and Drake uh, to the Arcade Fire and that sort of um, left field spectrum yeah. of things. So, you know, I think it's been a successful thing. There's critics, there's critics even in Canada of the CanCon rules. How what, has what's it some been? of the criticism? Yeah. Um, some people, Brian Adams is a oh, critic uh, okay. of CanCon rules because he thinks it breeds mediocrity, basically. Huh. That's his that's his criticism. But generally, the opinion is pretty high of CanCon. Um, yeah, because I think, you know, it, it, it cultivates a kind of musical culture that's healthy, I think. Artists are trying to do something creative and good and kind of trusting that it will be supported 
as opposed to like you need to kind of kill it and reach everybody in the whole world with something super accessible and super kind of uh, middle of the road or else, you know, you'll find yourself with nothing. So how has that impacted you? Like either recording wise, the music that you want to make and then also on the business side about getting exposure in Canada. Yeah, and you know, like um, we have the CBC in Canada, which is your equivalent of NPR mm -hmm. or the BBC in the UK. And CBC in Canada is somewhere between NPR and BBC in terms of its size. Like it's not as big as the BBC, but it's it's bigger than NPR. And CBC has been a vehicle for my music in Canada. It's kind of spread, helped spread my music across the country, largely because of those CanCon rules and, and stuff like that. So... As far as like practically speaking, business wise, it's been helpful. But I think also like in terms of creatively how it affects my music, like I grew up around a culture of music in Canada that I think is a little bit different than what you have here in the United States in terms of just, yeah, I mean, we have artists that, that kind of do their own thing and, and aren't necessarily so keen on uh, kind of hitting that mainstream success. I think it's interesting. Um, in what, 2011 is yeah. when I think you won the Juno. Yeah. Uh, and it was a battle between two of my favorite artists, you yeah. and Drake. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And while both hip hop artists, I, I would say the music is. Actually, I think if you're fans of Drake, you're going to be a fa fan of Shad. And if you're a fan of Shad, you'll be a fan of Drake. But the music's somewhat different, I, I suppose, within the hip hop yeah. uh, uh, sphere. But it was interesting watching you guys kind of battle against that and you actually won which was yeah. like amazing for a lot of people in america to see because th that the yeah. juno is the a grammy equivalent so it'd be like an underground artist beating one of the most popular artists in the world but in canada yeah. this was how was it received in it, canada it was still a surprise but uh it's, it was still a surprise it, you like you said like it's the rough equivalent of like yeah. Brother Ali winning the Grammy or something. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, Which yeah. would be great. We'd no love doubt. to see Ali no win doubt. the rap Grammy. Exactly, yeah. Um, yeah, Brother yeah. Ali beating the Black Eyed Peas. Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be the equivalent of that. So uh, it was definitely a surprise. I was surprised. I thought maybe there was some sort of error or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, G, my manager, we were just yeah. like, la we were laughing. No doubt. Like 20 minutes afterwards, like, are they sure? Like, but anyhow, it was, uh, it, was, it was great, you know, and in Canada, it wasn't like... It was a surprise. It wasn't maybe as big a deal as it would be down here because, um, like, my career is mainly in Canada, whereas his career is here and in Canada. No doubt. Yeah, yeah speaking of uh, the exposure that Drake's received here and how he's broken through here to an amazing level, yeah. um, conversely, you know, unfortunately, I don't think you've, you've gotten anywhere near the exposure that you deserve here in the States. So you're doing well in Canada. People know about you yeah. here in the States, even amongst, like, underground hip-hop heads and, like, the blog uh, yeah. world. Like, People don't really know you as much as they should. Do you feel that? Do you feel well, the, upset about that? The, yeah. Is there ever like any? Do you ever have like any levels of frustration about that, or or just feelings in general in terms of like, or or, or are yeah. there strategies that we're unaware of that are in place to yeah, to remedy no, that? No, I mean for me the hard thing is uh, because I grew my career in Canada in a pretty organic kind of grassroots kind of way yeah. from being on the ground and understanding the scenes, whereas here I'm not. I'm not on the ground, so I don't have that sort of like organic understanding of how things work and how music spreads, and mm -hmm. uh, so it's 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 a challenge for me, you know. Here it's all about payola. Is that the <laughs> is that the deal? <laughs> I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> no, yeah. It, I, I'm just saying it, it, here. I think in terms of like the, it's weird because it evolves and it shifts in terms of how it happens. Yeah. Um, I think. Primarily, most of it is always like relationship based. Exactly. I mean, whether it's uh, your relationship with other artists or your relationship uh, with the um, media outlets, whether they be the blogs or yeah. the writers, uh, whether it's print, uh, online. Um, but it is, there are elements of pay to play, not mm. payola, yeah. but, but you know, hiring PR firms, yeah. Yeah. Um, a publicist, you know, all of these people that are kind of like entrenched in terms of like, holding positions within the industry that are like gatekeepers yeah that will then give you uh kind of the cosign or give you a, a prominent space or position on their site or in their yeah. mag or, or whatever you can definitely break through without those things yeah but the i think a, ma a great majority of people are kind of caught into that that cycle of that's how you have to do it yeah well and, and part of that is going through like the label format so mm -hmm. have you thought about trying to get 
affiliated and signed and, and partner with a label for more than maybe just one project in the yeah, States? Yeah, I mean, I'd love to do it, but I think it's difficult to, um, it's been difficult to kind of like introduce somebody to my story and exactly like what it is that I do. Mm -hmm. You know, just not being here, just not being kind of in front of people all the time and kind of, uh, because I think there's maybe some nuances to what I do that like in Canada, they've had enough exposure to me that they kind of get it. Maybe here, like it, they need more of that face to face or like seeing a show or whatever kind of mm -hmm. thing. And I think it's hard to understand the code when I'm just like not here. I don't know yeah. kind of what circles I might be known in. I think I think it's more my music in the States at this point. It's kind of like if you've come across it by chance or some something. I don't know. Well, I'll give you a little parallel, though, in terms of like Hyphen and I share um, lots of like similar tastes and sensibilities in music. One of our favorite groups just period is a seattle based group called the physics okay and they're like super super dope you know what i mean and we we all we often talk about um kind of the same you know situation in terms of their inability to like break through hmm. the thing that i want to kind of possibly correlate to you is they are both the the, the, the two cats in the group they're both professionals you know, in terms of they both have like steady jobs. Yeah. They're comfortable in, in those positions. And, you know, you being like a grad student and having other like solid life interests beyond music. Yeah. Is that, does that in any way play into, you know, maybe not, not to say that you're complacent at all in terms yeah. of your pursuit of like musical success. Yeah. But it's, it could be secondary. I think, I think it could play into it to some extent, you know, like, uh, I know Drake, for example, spent a lot of time in Houston and, mm -hmm. and did that whole thing. Whereas I've never like camped in the States somewhere and like really made a push to like make those connections and mm -hmm. build those relationships. I think that might also partly be because like I have my career in Canada, which is just like I enjoy it and mm -hmm. it's kind of good. So yeah, it's, it makes it like a little bit, you know, I don't know. You're in, you got a, you have a sweet spot. I, I kind of got my thing yeah, going yeah. on, and so it it, it it creates a little bit of a disincentive to kind of come down here and struggle and, <laughs> and grind it and, out. And, and diminish your quality of life. <laughs> and, yeah, and, and grind it out. But uh, that being said, you know, I, I'd still love to keep, you know, making inroads if, if the opportunity presented itself. But I think that that is the hard thing is that, like, I'm just a dude named Shad, uh, it's difficult for people to be like have a sense of what I have to offer and see if they want to hear it mm -hmm. or not without, uh, you know, kind of being in front of people and kind of showing them a little bit of what my thing is. My only criticism of that as like a greedy rap fan uh, and music consumer <laughs> is that the messages in your music are so powerful and so dope and so necessary for kids and for the hip hop world to hear. And your music is also so good mm, that the, the hip hop world needs yeah, to hear that. Not just the messages in the music, but also the the, the style in in which the messages are delivered. Yeah, so I mean. genuine, so dope, uh, so intelligent, but yet accessible. Like everything about it. Seriously, it's some of my favorite music that's being made. And so, as a greedy fan, it's almost like. I think they used to like critique Jordan on this where they say like you have a responsibility yeah, yeah. to like display your talents. <laughs> Word. So it's almost like, you know, I mean, as your friend, I would never want you to do something you didn't want to do. But as a greedy rap fan, <laughs> I feel like you have like a responsibility to try to push this music as much as you can. And maybe and maybe yeah. not so much you, but like the people around you, like people like yeah. us, yeah. you know, your manager, like anyone you might be working with as a publicist. Like we got to push this music because this needs to be heard and consumed here in America well, more. When we were in Minneapolis a couple of weeks back, and yeah. um, G and I had breakfast, and we were talking, and and I didn't know that you were living in Vancouver. Yeah. I, I, for, for, I swear, like, all this time, I thought you were back east, and he's like, no, he's been out there for a year. And I was like, yo, how come he's not in Seattle more? Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? And it's like, you got to just get down here, man. We, we got I, you. I think I, think I got to do it. I think yo, I you can be a co-host on Sound Session. Yeah. Every Sunday night, drive we'll, we'll, down we'll, here. We'll take care of you, man. <laughs> like, you know, um, yeah, I mean, we're, you know, definitely plugged in, you know, so. Well, I, no, uh, I appreciate that. And, and and you guys have introduced me to a lot of people in yeah. Seattle. Like, yeah, Seattle yeah. has been yeah. great. Did a track Thanks with the Blue Scholars. Did a track with Blue Scholars. Yeah. Uh, opened a show for Saul. Yeah. Uh, opened a couple runs for Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. Yeah. Um, and you know, so mm -hmm. you guys have, have put me on here, Gabriel, Teodoros, Teodoros. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, Seattle, uh, Seattle, Seattle's good, but yeah, no, I, I, you know, you know me, I love, I love making music, yeah. um, whether it's a full length album or whether it's like a dub, you know, I just love making music. I want to keep working at it, keep getting better, yeah. And, and and yeah, keep pushing it down here. 
I also think there's a point, there's a part of it too, like where I'm, I'm kind of, I'm feeling content, like, or, or in that space of where it doesn't necessarily have to be like um, something that everybody becomes aware of. You know what I mean? Or if everybody is unaware of it, doesn't diminish its impactfulness or its um, level of quality. You know what I mean? So it's kind of one of those things where I think almost the exclusivity of it mm -hmm. like heightens the value of it. You know what I mean? So whereas obviously in, you know, in monetary senses and all those other things, you want to have the exposure that means more money, blah, blah, blah. But just even as an artist, like you said, you're going to keep creating. Yeah. You're going to keep recording, producing, making music. And I think as long as you're in that space, that's the most important thing. Yeah. Know? I'm with that. You know, I think I got to kind of just learn also, like, what are the channels exactly? Like, what are the kind of spaces where my music would be most, like, well-received? Because mm -hmm. I don't think I even exactly know that. Like, not exactly. You know, I haven't really paid Man, it nobody down. really knows. I guess you know no one really. And anybody that told you they cast know. Got to cast a wide yeah, net, and, and anybody actually had to sat down and told you that they knew how to do it would yeah. be lying. Because it's like. So the sure, last album, sure. Flying Colors, came out, what, last year, right? Yeah. 2013. 2013, yeah. Uh, 2013. What's on tap? What are you working on now? What am I working on now, man? Everything I've been doing lately has been on the lighter side of things. You know, that album uh, was kind of a lot of heavy lifting, like philosophically, you know, and stuff like that. And I feel like lately the stuff I've been doing has been uh, the kind of lighter side of, of what I like to do, which has been cool. That might lead to a mixtape or might mm -hmm. lead to... Um, you know, maybe just a, maybe just a project that's like more on that side of the spectrum. Um, so yeah, I, as as far as what I've been working on, I'd say more the lighter side of, of Shad. Um, but yeah, not working towards like a full length yet or a mixtape or anything. Been doing like some that. more stuff with the guitar. A little bit in yeah. the studio, yeah. Yeah. A little bit in the studio. Yeah. I, I I like that. Also, like you know, a couple of weeks ago when we were in Stanford, I like that yeah. element in the live setting too. Yeah. I think it adds like a another dynamic. And it's not like, uh, like kitschy or like novelty, you know. Yeah, what I mean? yeah. Like Little Wayne, you know. Yeah, yeah. Wayne, you know, it's like oh it's, not, it's not it's not it's not an accessory, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like a, a skateboard or yeah. a guitar, you know, just just like you know to play the rocker. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah. No. That, yeah. Again, like I, you know, I learned how to play guitar in high school, and yeah. and that song that I did at Soundset that was back on, from my first album when yeah. I didn't have beats. You know, I was just like in my room writing rhymes. I didn't have beats. Yeah. Trying to figure out what I can rap to is yeah. just picked up the guitar kind of thing so so I still like to keep that in the live show because yeah dynamically it is something nice to kind of break up the the yeah. vibe a little bit yeah man if you think about it like you know it'll it'll, it'll, it'll get you out of the, the the basement of the the rap genre you get a, you pick up a guitar man you get you get other budgets open up for you yeah <laughs> you get that Tim McGraw yeah. money yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know you won't you won't you won't be an urban artist yeah yeah know? Uh, yeah, where's the best sure. place people can go to catch you online, man? Uh, Facebook.com slash Shad K is where you can catch me personally online, uh, spreading the news about whatever's going on and also just talking about whatever nonsense I want to talk about. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, if you had to tell people one Shad track to listen to, to uh, if they haven't heard any of your music, what song would you pick? I'd say if you have a lot of time on your hands, <laughs> check out the Hot Dog Garbage that that is i mean it's like 7 minutes long but that basically runs the gambit i guess of what i what i do in my music um if you don't have quite that much time maybe check out rose garden mm -hmm. classics what's sure. the last song you heard uh an mc um you know a verse spit that you were like i wish i had wrote that or it inspired you to yeah. go right well we were driving down here today and and played the new common track uh-huh and my bass player in the back seat, he just went, this is nice to hear. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's exactly the sentiment, you know? It's just like, yeah, you know, something something vivid and passionate and, yeah. uh, you know, raw. Yeah. You know, so I'd say that's the last thing that I heard that, you know, really made me feel good, made me feel uh, inspired for sure. Shout out to Common. All right, lightning round. Favorite MC yeah. of all time. How are you going to throw that in a lightning round first question? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Quickly, all right, I'm going to go Common. I'm going to go Common. Common. Common, favorite all time? Okay. He's my favorite. You, right did, you said favorite, right? Not yeah. greatest? Yeah, yeah, favorite and favorite. All right, uh, cele celebrity crush? Never Natalie Portman. Question. Or Nia Long. Oh, now, Natalie Portman. Back in the day, Nia Long.
Best 90s sitcom. How you get... Wow. 90s? Yeah. Fresh Prince. Best left-handed basketball player. Chris Mullen. Favorite sneaker ever. <laughs> Jordan Force. Force. Good choice. Uh, best meal after a show. Fish tacos. From from, from where? <laughs> somewhere good. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somewhere hopefully where there's a body of water close by. Yeah, yeah. Uh, playing to 11, ones and twos or all ones? Oh, ones. At this point in my life, two, man. <laughs> <laughs> I need them too. All, right. All right, we're going to let you go on that. Uh, Shad performing tonight in Seattle. Thank you so much for coming through Sound Session, one of our favorite artists, favorite right. people. Favorite radio it. show. Thank you very much. Oh, favorite radio show. You know it's Sunday Night Sound Session. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Look Look good man right here. All right, thanks for coming through. <laughs> But I know what they stand for.